It's that time again, time for children's worship. We are glad you're here today. Make sure that you have some room to move around in case you want to dance as we sing. And you need your worship bulletin so you can color at the end of the lesson. Hey boys and girls, Mrs. Peters right here on your computer screen to welcome you to children's worship at Christ Community Church. I have missed seeing you and I've also missed being one of your Sunday morning teachers, but I am so glad that we get to have this time together. Even though we are not sitting in little blue chairs, we can still learn about God and worship him together. Since God is everywhere and worthy of all our praise, we are going to worship God today through prayer, through singing, and through reading about him in the Bible. So let's prepare our hearts to thankfully worship him today. Good morning, Christ Community Church. My name's Jeffrey West. I'm one of the elders, and I'm Owen and Evelyn's dad. And it's my privilege today to lead you in uh, prayer as we enter worship. So please pray with me. Lord, we thank you that we can uh, worship you and that you are a God who is approachable that you see us all in our own homes, even though we're scattered, and you know us, and you love us because of what your Son has done, and you call us to worship. So I pray for these children that you will send your Spirit to them and enable them to worship you well this morning. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing, I'm Trading My Sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Yes, Lord. 
that reminds us of how much Jesus loves children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Let's do it again. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Zonda Kids presents The Jesus Storybook Bible Every story whispers his name. Written by Sally Lloyd-Jones and read by David Suchet. The Terrible Lie Adam and Eve lived happily together in their beautiful new home, and everything was perfect for a while, until the day when everything went wrong. God had a horrible enemy. His name was Satan. Satan had once been the most beautiful angel, but he didn't want to be just an angel. He wanted to be God. He grew proud and evil and oh, full of hate. And God had to send him out of heaven. And Satan was seething with anger and looking for a way to hurt God. He wanted to stop God's plan. Stop this love story right there. So he disguised himself as a snake and waited in the garden. Now, God had given Adam and Eve only one rule. Don't eat the fruit on that tree, God told them, because if you do, you'll think you know everything. You'll stop trusting me, and then death and sadness and tears will come. You see, God knew if they ate the fruit, they would think they didn't need him, and they would try to make themselves happy without him. But God knew there was no such thing as happiness without him, and life without him wouldn't be life at all. As soon as the snake saw his chance, he slithered silently up to Eve. Does God really love you? The serpent whispered. If he does, why won't he let you eat the nice, juicy, delicious fruit? Poor you. Perhaps God doesn't want you to be happy. The snake's words hissed into her ears and sunk down deep into her heart like poison. Does God love me? Eve wondered. Suddenly she didn't know any more. Just trust me, the serpent whispered. You don't need God. One small taste. That's all. And you'll be happier than you could ever dream. Eve picked the fruit and ate some. And Adam ate some too. Ah, a terrible lie came into the world. It would never leave. It would live on in every human heart, whispering to every one of God's children, God doesn't love me. And it wasn't a dream. <laughs> it was a nightmare. A dove flew from Adam's hand. A deer darted in a thicket. 
It was as if they were frightened by something. A chill was in the air. Something strange was happening. They had always been naked, but now they felt naked and wrong. And they didn't want anyone to see them. So they hid. Later that evening, as God was taking his walk, he called to them. Children! Usually, Adam and Eve loved to hear God's voice and would run to him. But this time, they ran away from him and hid in the shadows. Where are you? God called. Hiding, Adam said. We're, we're, we're afraid of you. Oh, did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat? God asked them. Adam said, Eve made me do it. What have you done? God asked. Eve said, The serpent made me do it. And terrible pain came into God's heart. His children hadn't just broken the one rule. They had broken God's heart. They had broken their wonderful relationship with him. And now... He knew everything else would break. God's creation would start to unravel and come undone and go wrong. From now on, everything would die, even though it was all supposed to last forever. You see, sin had come into God's perfect world, and it would never leave. God's children would be always running away from him and hiding in the dark. Their hearts would break now and never work properly again. God couldn't let his children live forever. Not in such pain. Not without him. There was only one way to protect them. You will have to leave the garden now, God told his children, his eyes filling with tears. This is no longer your true home. It's not the place for you anymore. But before they left the garden, God made clothes for his children to cover them. He gently clothed them and then he sent them away on a long, long journey out of the garden, out of their home. Well, in another story, <laughs> it would all be over and that would have been the end, but not in this story. God loved his children too much to let the story end there. Even though he knew he would suffer, God had a plan, a magnificent dream. One day he would get his children back. One day he would make the world their perfect home again. And one day he would wipe away every tear from their eyes. You see, no matter what, in spite of everything, God would love his children with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And though they would forget him and run from him, deep in their hearts, God's children would miss him always and long for him lost children yearning for their home. Before they left the garden, God whispered a promise to Adam and Eve. It will not always be so. I will come to rescue you, and when I do, I'm going to do battle against the snake. I'll get rid of the sin and the dark and the sadness you let in here. I'm coming back for you. And he would. One day, God himself would come. Even though we do not love God or his creation the way that we should, and even though we sin and make ourselves and others sad and lonely, and even sick and afraid, and even though we have a broken relationship with God, God still loves us with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking always and forever love. So God makes a promise to Adam and Eve. God promises he will battle the snake and get rid of the sin, and his people will never be sad or lonely or sick or afraid ever again. 
God will mend our relationship with him so that we can be with him forever. How does God do that? How does God solve the problem of our sin? By sending Jesus. Spend time today talking to your parents about this never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love from God. And how we see that through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. It's time for the follow me prayer. I'll pray slowly and you can repeat after me. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father God, thank you for sending Jesus to solve the problem of sin and for one day making the world perfect again. Thank you, God, that even when I sin and make mistakes, you love me and forgive me because I trust in you. Because of Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. We will now close our time saying the Lord's Prayer together. You can pray along with me aloud, or you can pray quietly to yourself. The words are written on the screen for you. Let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are so glad that you joined us today for worship. If you have any questions about the lesson today, be sure and ask your parents. Maybe... You could watch the video again or read the Bible passage as a family. You could do this either today or later in the week. Now it's time to work on your coloring page and I hope that you have fun completing it. Again, thank you for worshiping God today. He is glorified when his children gather in his name.
over the face of the water. There was light. There was light. 